So which of the, you got to think in frameworks or you're going to be lost. I'm telling you in business for the rest of your life. Everybody's freewheeling business. Once I got over hundred million in revenue per year, every business flaw I have starts to come out. A lot of entrepreneurs are cocky because they're running five, 10, 20 million dollar businesses, which is fine. But those are like little blue belt businesses, maybe purple belt. So when you get lost, you have to have frameworks, the 300 frameworks of wealth, the 67 steps. So what is the framework on the social media strategy in order to go viral? And I was talking about Snoop Dogg has transformed his entire, I think he's at, well, what do you, who knows what framework I'm following when I'm looking at somebody like Snoop? Making decisions with calculators. Decision with That is one of the 67 steps. I'd say you're getting warmer, but not, you're warmer, but not there because that is more like if you're trying to decide to sell an asset, you have a piece of real estate. I just bought a business. I just bought bodybuilding.com. I had to calculate what I'm going to offer instead of using my gut feeling. I created an Excel spreadsheet and a, basically a formula that accounted for the risk, the opportunity cost of capital, the other uses and came up with, here's my max offer and valuation that I'm going to pay. So that is a good framework, but it's not applicable to you know, emulating somebody like a Snoop Dogg to grow your social media, your TikTok, your Insta. What What's a closer one? Good artist copy, great artist steal. Right, Pablo Picasso, good artist copy, great artist steal. That's even warmer, but people still get lost because they're, they're out there copying different, who do you copy then? There's another framework. You're sure. getting close. Straight to the top. Straight to the top. That is something I've been telling people for years. If you have a choice, <laughs> I had one of my brothers want to learn basketball and he was like, yeah, my next door neighbor was like a college basketball player. So he's been teaching me. I was like, bro, why don't you go watch a YouTube video of Steph Curry or LeBron James or Kobe Bryant playing? It's the same amount of time. Go copy the very top. So if you look at Snoop, like he's hit like 76 million followers. And yeah, he was a celebrity, but how many celebrities push over 50, 60 million? A lot of rappers that are legacy, you know, like old school rappers, OGs like Snoop, they're, they don't even have 100,000 followers. So you look at his strategy and the framework of mind is good artists copy, great artists steal, put cost with it. I don't mean you steal their stuff. Although, what does Snoop post a lot of? His own content or other people's content. He finds the best content and posts it. He's kind of following Pablo Picasso. But when you don't know who to emulate, that's why when I'm looking at business, I go, who's the best business person? Risk adjusted and time adjusted. It's probably Warren Buffett in the modern world. Because yes, there's people richer than him now. Elon Musk, you know, uh, Jeff Bezos, Zuckerberg. Because Buffett now is probably, he's still in the top 10, but not at the very top. But if you look, he took less risk. And capital always has to be measured at risk-adjusted returns. Yes, you have to be way richer if you take hell of a lot of risks. So Warren Buffett, I mean, you can argue Jeff Bezos too. Elon Musk certainly, I would say Elon is the most creative of all time. I would give these different entrepreneurs different merits. Nobody's good at everything. The problem with Warren Buffett is he builds some businesses which are not admirable like Coca-Cola, which is really bad for the world. So I wouldn't say Warren Buffett is the most, <laughs> what, whatever word you want to use. Elon is like, I want to do things that help the world, you know, so maybe Elon's better from that standpoint. But in terms of like being a cold calculated investor and making good decision, Who's better than Warren Buffett? That guy, I never made a mistake. My favorite thing on Warren Buffett is there's a story. Reporters go, hey, tell us about your losses. What's your worst investment ever in the last 60 years? And he's like, oh, yeah, I make a lot of some mistakes. And they're like, well, what is one of them? We can't figure one out. He's like, one time I bought, I forget what it was, United Airlines or American Airlines preferred stock. And he's like, yeah. And it didn't work out as I expected. And she's like, oh, you lost all your money? He's like, no, I actually made $100 million. But, you know, I thought I was going to make $5 billion. And I was thinking, my wish on all my family and everybody I love is 
May your worst mistakes make you $100 million, okay? But the man's a decision-making tree, which, by the way, Warren Buffett quotes. Sometimes people say, Ty, why do you quote people so much? I'm like, well, <laughs> to think that you have all the answers in your own brain, you'll never get truly wealthy. All these great people study other stuff. You know, the greatest conquerors, the greatest thinkers, they build on the body of work of other people. Like Newton said, if I've seen further than others, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. That's another framework. That's not in the 67 steps, but that's in the, the 300 frameworks of wealth, which I've never shared all of them publicly, but I use them. But you've got to stand on the shoulders of giants. A great reason Elon Musk is the richest man in the world, and he is putting rockets in space, and he is, does have a, you know amazing electric car. He didn't come up with all that science. That's how science works. So he's quoting other people. He's building. Tesla was two brothers built Tesla. I mean, he's built off of it. But even the very idea, he was built off the shoulders of other people. PayPal was a merger. He built off the shoulders of other people's work too. So that's what I was saying at the very beginning. It's a great book. I want you all to read it. Lessons from Titans. New business book. I'm listening now. I'm now reading it. And I just finished the audio today. It is a great book, and it goes through the, the boring business stories that nobody talks about because it's much more in interesting to talk about Celsius, Meltdown, and Bored Apes, and you know Tesla. But there's a whole bunch of businesses that have stood the test of time, which is the real thing. Can you stand the test of time? Anybody can get rich for a year, but can you get rich, stay rich, and keep building wealth, not just for yourself, but for other people? And so that lessons from Titans that talks about some of these companies like Danaher, United Rentals, things people have most people never heard of. And those people, you talk about good business and what they say is what truly wins is a humble leader, humble leadership. And what brings down great companies, every company on the Dow Jones industrial average from the 1800s, the original big companies in America, every one of them's fallen because <laughs> different reasons, people get cockier, we're GE. GE was the biggest company in the world in 2001. And they almost went bankrupt twice a few years ago because it's easy to be like, we're the best. We don't need to follow frameworks. We don't need to copy other great people. We don't need to go straight to the top. Shit. Yes, you do. Number one thing that'll take you out eventually. And I see it. I see people on social media. They're like, Ty, you see this new person, this new person make money. I'm like, let's see if it lasts five years. Anybody can hear with my own records to say once is love, twice is skill. One five-year period to be rich is luck. It's a lot of luck, but 10 years is hard. 20 years is even harder. So, so you, you gotta, gotta stay humble, build off frameworks, not your own, just your own intuition. You can use your own intuition sometimes, but like you said, sometimes a calculator will give you a better, cool, calculated, literally, no pun intended, structure on what to invest in, what to buy, how to not overpay for stuff. Look at crypto, a lot of motherfuckers. It was a good crypto protocol, but you can't pay that much. And that's why that's a good framework, the calculator one. Follow the process is a good one. Going straight to the top, because if you follow that one, you can start copying the wrong people. So you need framework on top of framework. That's what makes it hard. It's kind of like chess openings. One of my mentors is the second best chess player in the world. Fabiano Carana. He's ranked number two grandmaster probably in history. You know, I once asked him, how many openings are there that you've mastered? He said, well, there's 1,100 openings in chess, established approximately. So think about it, great chess people, they follow frameworks, an opening sequence. Here's the best nine moves. And who do they copy? They don't copy their next door neighbor. They copy the great chess players, Mikhail Tall, you know, Bobby Fischer, Spassky, all these kind of people. So in chess, you see it, it's funny. A famous NBA player DM'd me the other day. Out of the blue, it was kind of shocking. Because this is a big one. One of the top five most well-known. And he asked me a question. It was basically life advice. And what, this was the interesting part. I had to think way longer than regular people who asked me that question. Because this dude already follows the frameworks. He has a coach. To get in the NBA, you've listened to five smart coaches. He has a personal trainer. He has discipline, high levels of conscientiousness, perfectionism, organization. So it was pretty interesting. I was thinking, 
the people who win in sports follow frameworks. Like if you watch Kobe Bryant, there's like a set of moves. If you're posting up, he copied Michael Jordan. There's a video where they overlay Kobe Bryant doing post shots, like from the post, and, it, and they overlaid it with Michael Jordan. Their bodies almost mesh together. And so, what was the advice you gave It's a long set of advice, and it's advice I've never given anybody else because the dude already knows black belt advice. You have to go to, I had to like dig into, you know, the coral belt, red belt advice that I learned from guys that are on top of the Forbes list. Yeah, and I was thinking, what a sad world. Everybody could have learned what this guy learned. And yet everybody I start with, it's like every single person, I have to start with the most basic stuff. Who do you copy? Who are you listening to? Are you personally being coached by somebody? Is somebody yelling at you? All these pro basketball players have somebody yelled at them, or at least were strict. Maybe they don't yell, but they were strict. I'm not surprised LeBron's a billionaire. I'm not surprised Michael Jordan became a billionaire. They already had the structure in place. All they had to learn was the tactics of money. I'm not surprised Chris Paul's crazy rich. Shaq is worth more than 500. Magic Johnson's one of the richest basketball players. You know, interesting story. When Magic Johnson retired in Los Angeles, that he had like a year of retirement and came back a little bit. And he walked up to every single floor seat. That's where the richest people in LA all go. Not all, but a lot. It's a prestigious place. And he said, can I take you to coffee? I, you can come to my game for 15 years. Can I take you to coffee and learn business from you? And he went around with like 50 of the smartest business people. He picked their brain straight to the top. Usually the four seats of the Lakers are, it's, it's the most prestigious place. It's the William Morris Endeavor billionaires. It's the Steven Spielbergs. It's the Jack Nichols. It's the people that are at the pinnacle not just a business, but of entertainment. And he picked their brain, then he retired. I mean, he's made like 700 million, he bought the Dodgers or whatever. And there's a lot of pro basketball players that forgot to take what they learned as athletes and apply it and they go, oh, they all went broke. But Magic was like, I already have the blueprint of success right here. And the blueprint was do what you do in sports in life. It's funny, I tell people you should listen to mentor. Oh, you don't need mentor? Imagine being a pro athlete and saying, I don't need a coach. Ronaldo has a coach, lots of them. And when you talk to pro uh, athlete, they're all humble. They say, I wanna give credit to my high school coach, that one college coach, that one physical therapist, that trainer. Michael Jordan had Tim Grover helping him learn how to do weights so he didn't get injured, mobility training. But in the modern world, I see people on social media and like, you don't need to learn from that, just learn on your own. It's insane. So don't be that person, be humble. No matter how good you are, there's, there's somebody who knows, has an angle you need to absorb in your brain. And if you do this and you go to bed a little bit smarter and you follow frameworks, you become an unstoppable machine. Even if you fail and go bankrupt, you'll make it right back. But if you don't know the frameworks, you'll build wealth and if you happen to lose it, it'll never come back. Ever. There's more one hit wonders in business than you'll ever see, more than a music film. Anyway.